Hi, I'm Chris Sistrunk. I'm a senior consultant with Mandiant's Industrial Control System Security Practice. And today I'm here to talk to you about industrial control system network architectures and the different types. Uh, there's many different types of industrial control systems and all kinds of different uh, architectures out there, but I'm going to talk about three different types. Also, I want to talk to you today about the Mandiant ICS Health Check and how we talk about your architectures and how we look at how they're connected and later we'll talk about how we have threats and how we can do threat modeling. But today we'll start with a standalone control system. It is a, for instance, this one might control an escalator. You might have them controlling other things like elevators. Uh, this is a standalone PLC. It has analog inputs, digital inputs, and controls, and it may not have much else. Um, it's very simple. It has logic that controls the process. and but now you see things like this being coming connected to the internet. Uh, that's because uh, you might have more people uh, doing different things, multiple things, and now they have to do more with less, uh, getting the data from these things, maybe getting remote access, uh, and not having awareness about security. So there's this myth of the air gap. Uh, used to many years ago these systems were truly air gapped but now we're getting more connectivity and more data from these d devices uh, that used to not have any connectivity so we there's this myth of an air gap the second system is a distributed control system DCS and you find these at power plants and refineries and manufacturing facilities and they're a little bit more complicated. They have many different components, uh, like PLCs like we have over there, uh, that control different uh, things like a turbine or a digester or some kind of uh, pressure vessel, things like that. Uh, then you have redundant control system ne network connectivity for uh, additional uptime. We want to make sure that the plant and the process runs. So if we lose one part of the network or lose one PLC, you have uh, maximum uptime. Then you have multiple human machine interfaces that allows the operators to control the process. You have a uh, connectivity to plant uh, part of the network, the plant facing network where you have a data historian where uh, an engineer can look at the different logs from the control system and look at the data trending over time. Well, sometimes we have seen these where they're connected to IT and you have a flat network where the IT network and the plant side of the control system are the same network. And that is a problem in control system security where if you have a, uh, something bad happening on the IT side, could come down and affect the control system. So even commodity malware like uh, Configure, you find these uh, getting down into the control system. Um, the last piece uh, that we want to talk about as far as architecture is the SCADA system, supervisory control and data acquisition. Uh, there's a very large control system that you find in power grids uh, for the power companies, multiple state, multiple cities. Um, also water power, uh, water plants also have multiple cities and you have maybe an operator for one state or one city and, uh, and another operator for another state. You have your SCADA architecture here, maybe in a data center, and then you have a telecom cloud that might be fiber optics, you have radio, you know, different types of lease line maybe from the telecom companies you may be leasing uh, radio or uh, leasing fiber optics and whatever cloud you might have uh, you have to get the connectivity out to your substation so you might have a, a, a power substation or in the case of water a water well site and you have a, a, a gateway different controllers down at the bottom and you have maybe 50, 100, you know, 500 of these substations that you're getting connectivity to, getting data from, and then the operators are sending controls down to these sites. Well, uh, we talk about uh, another type of architecture reference model. It's called the Purdue model. And in between the network from the IT, IT network to the SCADA network, we have a DMZ. And that stands for Demilitarized Zone. And that is a safe area where 
Uh, if someone wants to get data in or out uh, of the control system, they have to go through the DMZ. Even if you might have a third party or, or a vendor having remote activity, uh, remote connectivity to your control system, they have to get it from the DMZ and not from the control system itself. So there's no direct connection to the control system to the, say the third party or the internet. And you can also have a Purdue model here, but I just wanted to show you that there are flat networks out there, uh, people that are not aware about the security threats. Um, there's a great job of people doing uh, security where they're adding DMZs and firewalls and being aware of threats, but there's a wide range. And we see a lot of these control systems are connected to the internet and they don't have that security awareness. And I just want to show you these things about ICS architecture and where we are and how we want to uh, help you fix your architecture, make it more defensible with our ICS health check. Uh, please check out our other videos on our FireEye website or on our YouTube channel. Thanks. Mm -hmm.